PS5 and the This Kingdom podcast. And on this episode, we are going to be discussing Pandora, um, World of Avatar. Um, Victoria is actually there live in Walt Disney World right now. So if you do hear a few little noises, you all know why. There, she's currently just sat there. Probably be your feet up eating a doll whip. Is that right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm eating some beignets right now. <laughs> Or as, as I call them, bad donuts. They, I, didn't, I didn't really kind of fancy that when I was there at the French Court. I didn't quite see what the fuss was about. Oh, I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that note, um, have you actually managed to get over to Pandora yet? Honestly, I I knew for a fact I wasn't going to go over this weekend just for the simple fact I knew that the crowds were going to be ridiculous and the wait times were going to be outrageous. So I decided to wait maybe, like, in the second weekend of June to go. Yeah. And that was a good decision on my part. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally over the weekend, um, it looks like it was hitting capacity. Um, the ride queues are silly. I mean, the same thing happened over at um, the California Adventure for the Guardians of the Galaxy with some s- serious, like, four or five hundred minute waits. Um, it'll all sort of even out eventually, but... It looks like it's going down very well. Yeah, I mean, I know for a fact that people were lining up at 6 a.m. outside of Animal Kingdom, and they were letting, I I believe, 8 or 9 o'clock. By the time 11 a.m. hit, they they basically hit capacity. Each ride was at 300 minutes. It was an hour and a half wait just to get into Wind Traders, the gift shop in Pandora. (laughs) Like, the gift shop, though. So, um... And then I know they went to phase three closing. Um, for those who don't know, when um, a park hits a certain capacity, they begin phase closing. Phase three is the very last phase, meaning they can no longer let anyone into the park. Yeah. So yeah. once about 8 p.m. hit, they did not let anyone else in until 11 p.m. And that was only for Disney Resort guests to do extra magic hours for Pandora. Yeah, I mean, to me... You know, this whole concept of, ah, oh, well, n- nobody's interested in Pandora because it's not Disney and no one cares. Well, I think that kind of word seems to definitely disappear now. I mean, honestly, I feel like they could have been a little bit better staffed because I do know for a fact that a lot of my cast member friends were got calls from the <laughs> calls from Disney asking if they could come him to help Pandora, so that's mm. how I knew it was, I made the right decision not to come this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, feel like oh yeah. Carry on. I really... Yeah, I mean, from my point of view as well, like, looking at some of the news and stuff, you know, they've been doing a very good job of, like, you know, they got, they did this, the opening sort of dedication ceremony, they got the celebrities in, they kind of took their time, and they, you know, they let all the kids in from the local schools doing it. Um, I think, again, a good way to just testing the area and just getting loads and loads of people in there to get ready for this week. Yeah, I, I feel like they did a great job. They let certain people come at certain times, like the past holders, the cast members, the, the Florida Group um, Kids Project, I believe that was called. Yeah. I probably for that, but... <laughs> yeah. I think just in general, I mean, it does seem like it's been going down very well. Um, I did notice they have now put a vehicle from the flight of passage outside so people can start trying it because I think there was a lot of people complaining about not being able to fit into it. Looking at the video I've seen of people getting on this little like um, seating area. It looks very very snug with it going behind people's um, the back of their legs. Yeah I have seen a few complaints on Twitter about it's not really good for people of a larger size. I guess I would say plus size to be correct. Yeah. Well, this I mean, is, for me yeah. in plus size, so I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, I must admit, I'm, you know, with the plan of going to Disney probably next year, I'm looking at this going, am I actually going to be able to ride this? Because obviously being bigger, but also I have got massive legs and there's not, and they're very muscly because I tend to walk on my front of my feet and as I found out from a Michael McIntyre sketch the other day, Apparently, if you walk on the front of your feet, it makes your calves really big. And so I've got big, muscly calves, you know, and therefore looking at how it is, I don't know if my legs will fit. And you kind of can't help but feel like opening a ride in the 21st century where they've been planning it for seven years. This seems a very bad fl- floor design. Yeah, especially for, you know, people that are disabled, like, you know, those who have to use wheelchairs. I feel like 
they could have designed it possibly better. I mean, every other ride of that capacity in Disney World has that, you know, that certain seat where, you know, someone who needs to be transferred into a wheelchair has to sit in this specific seat. At least they have that, but I feel like, you know, they could have done that better with the attraction. Yeah. I mean, sure. from my point of view as well, as I'm looking at this kind of thinking, you know, one thing, obviously, like, the same was one thing, but obviously being bigger... The concept of being big, you know, you could be you could be completely muscular, you could be um, a bodybuilder, you could just be very, very fit, or you could just be big. And you're looking at like, you know, you know, when I go out to Orlando, I feel small. And I'm not I'm not tiny by any means. Um looking at the amount of people that you know, how people's bodies are changing, it does seem a very odd decision. Obviously they've got to push the boundaries of what they're doing. But that whole thing of the thing coming behind their leg, it just feels like that seems like a design like flaw. A lot of people can, are seem to be getting on all right with it, but it has caused a bit of, and I wonder what it's going to be like when it hits the real people getting on that that attraction. Yeah, I mean, hopefully they'll quickly see this issue and fix it. I mean, I don't really know how exactly they would be able to fix it because the way I'm seeing it, that would mean they would have to shut the ride down for maybe like a week or two and do some redesigns, which I know wouldn't go too well no, right now. No. no. I mean, the amount of time they've been spent, it just seems a very odd choice. I mean, the thing coming onto your back, I can understand. I think it's just that leg, the leg bar just seems a very unusual place to be locked in. And some people are obviously talking about being claustrophobic. Um, I know my wife was a little bit like, ooh, I'm not sure of being, that seems way too restrictive. Yeah, I, I mean... I feel like Flight of Passage, based on the videos I've seen, I mean, it's worth it, but they're really going to have to maybe do some adjustments to it. Um, the Navi River Journey looks yeah. like it's for everybody. I've, got, I've gotten mostly it's wonderful, the animatronics are great, but it might it's something that you can probably do once and be fine. Yeah. Um, it's... Like even that there, I mean, you can't help but feel like why it wasn't a new boat, a boat design where wheelchairs could get in kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, I feel like they could have just thought about more accessibility for those who need it. Yeah. I mean, Disney's been very good about that over the years. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with Joe Rody. I'm not sure. Cause, mm. You know, that's his baby. So, I mean, I don't know, but... I know one thing that didn't have issues was the merchandise, so... Yeah. yeah. Well, what's, what was going on with the merchandise? Um, well, it's being... A lot of it's already being sold on eBay for outrageous prices. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw yeah. some of it. I mean, I think a lot of this as well is um, businesses and people trying to cash in while the hype's there. You know, personally, I think half that stuff's going to end up in... Um, the discounted section within six months anyway, but um, certain aspects probably will be hanging up, will be, will, will be valued, especially the more limited edition stuff. And the idea of, I think as well as, there's always that aspect of when it's brand new and open, people want to be there. Yeah, that's true. I mean, at the same time, a lot of that merchandise could have been purchased on the um, Disney store online. Yeah. But it was just the fact that they're selling like, just park maps for twelve dollars or like a pin for six hundred. It's like it's clearly you're trying to get over on someone. Yeah. Which is yeah. I mean, the, it's opportunistic, and at the end of the day, if if, if um, the buyers don't buy it, the set, the price will come down. At the end of the day, it's it's a blind demand, and if the demand isn't there, they won't they won't go for that. That's true. That's true too. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. But I know a lot of the merchandise was pretty, like the Banshee I know is selling very well. The little Banshee yeah. that is personally chosen for you and stuck on your shoulder. I know a lot of the shirts and pins are selling well too. I'm sure I was it. Yeah. Here, but I can't find one, so. Yeah, I mean, I think as well as a lot of this is opening weekend, a lot of people are excited about it and sort of seeing where it goes from there. Um, but, no, it's, it does look good. I can't wait to see it. I mean, it does look epic. It just certainly looks like a really good addition to um, the Animal Kingdom. Yeah, I honestly think it was something that they really needed, and it's going to 
just be an awesome addition to Animal Kingdom. I really think it's going to be great. And I can't wait to see if, to hear your thoughts once you've actually sort of seen it in person and ridden it and stuff like that. Yes, we need to go to Pandora together. Yeah. Let's go to um, Satuli Kitty. <laughs> well, on that note, guys, uh, let me know what you guys are thinking of um, Pandora, the world of Avatar. Let us know in the comments below. Victoria, where can they find you on the interwebs? They can find me on Twitter at he calls me PP and Instagram he calls me Pineapple Princess. And you can find us over at DizKingdom.com and all the different social media. If you are watching this on YouTube, um, hit that subscribe button. We've recently changed around some of the channels. So we have got our gaming channel, which was the original channel, which has had a lot of video game stuff on there. So we kind of split it up because audience changes and stuff so if you like the our this kingdom podcast be sure to subscribe over there and finally you can find us on all the different audio platforms as well on that note guys thank you very much for watching or listening and we shall see you guys soon laters bye